Hi, my name's James. I'm a psychology teacher. And I'm Willem, and I'm a brand strategist. We didn't say your last names. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just, Does that I, matter? I completely like, you, you froze. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, it's probably even better this way. Okay. And every week, we go on tangents to answer one of life's big questions. Our theme for season three is career. And before we get into, today, into today's questions, we're, I, we need, we'd love to hear your questions. Oh, yes, so yes, message yes, me Please. at hello at jamesdesouza.com. Yes. Because if you send me the questions, then Willem has no idea what it's going to be, which is always fun. To watch villain come up with an answer yes and, and while, subscribe to the channel well, yes please like the videos comment tell yeah. us what you think of the videos if you like them don't like them um and uh and same thing give us five stars on the podcast if you listen to the audio wherever you're listening to your podcast yeah leave us a review you leave some comments because this is this is evolved and in, we're into uh, this is like the third album the third challenging album by any kind of band the second album is the challenging one. We're into the third album now. Metallica made their masterpiece to the third album. This season is becoming our... Metallica it was. More Master of Puppets is their think. masterpiece. Don't even go there. It was. Uh, their no, I was just saying that... No, no, no. I was, I, I was only saying that by the time they made their masterpiece, they, they had a few more people listening than we do. So they I did. I don't know if we, can say, if we can say we're at our level of Master of Puppets just yet. <laughs> we're getting there. We're not there yet. Sure. We're not there yet. So season three, but the theme is career. Compare to Metallica at this point. He, I, well, <laughs> I'm quite happy to compare myself to Metallica because I think they're awesome. I but think the, they're awesome, but I, I, it's like, I would be like, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm anyway, our question about. today. I apologize. Just <laughs> We've already gone on a tangent before we get into the question. So we're in this theme of career. Yeah. This is episode four. It is episode four, isn't it? Yeah, it's episode four. Yes. And today's question is, when does a series of jobs become a career? When does a series of jobs become a career? Mm. Okay, so then uh, like a lot of those questions, there's like a very quick and quick, quick answer to it because it's in the definition of the word that we covered in the intro episode about career. Yep. Uh, and then hopefully there's enough material for us to have a longer answer. Uh, so far, we haven't we haven't really had to cut an episode short. I don't think <laughs> but, um, we nearly did. We nearly did. Did we? All right, anyway, because yeah, uh, it was over an hour. But so today's I, question: I, Yeah, when the does only a series point, of jobs become the only point when a series of jobs turns? It's one where you turn look back at it and see a theme mm -hmm. or identify a theme, um, and then honestly, sometimes it doesn't. But that's in the eye of the beholder, I think. To me, and the reason I say this is I think of somebody I know uh, well, and uh, I remember him telling me once that he wasn't like me, that he didn't have a career. He only had like just odd jobs. Okay. And that he didn't develop a career like me, he just had a, a, just a series of McJobs uh, to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. Um. So maybe when he looks back at some point, there'll be another career, but he always says, and I mean, he's my brother-in-law. Um, he says that we, like my siblings and I tend to have high ideals or ambitions about what we want to do, whether we fail or succeed or whether we're happy or not with what we're doing. But he's like, I never had that kind of thing. I'm just happy to read and study and have a few, and he has a bunch of side projects. He does a lot, mm. but he's just not, He's like, as long as I got a bit of money coming in, I don't feel like I have the need for, a, like, I don't, my, my, um, uh, I mean, so at this point, I think he said something like that, but I'm probably completely interpreting his words and taking them for, well, this answer and I'm saying them, but I, I don't find the need to define myself or to find meaning in work or paid job in the sense of a career to be, be happy with my life, I guess. It's, it's interesting. There's two things you said that are really interesting. One is this idea of, I am a, I am a teacher. Mm -hmm. I, sometimes I would say that. And sometimes I say I work as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes like, well, who, who am I? What do I do? 
like that that world. And then the other phrase you used that I think is really funny and really cool actually is muck job. Muck so job, yeah, yeah. Explain, so explain muck job. Well, he he told me that, and I I don't I don't know. You if never I've heard, heard it, it before. I'm really? sure I did, of course, but explain a mcdub right well i mean obviously it's kind of obvious from the reference the reference is to mcdonald's and the reference is a you know a low paid um or minimum wage style paid job that you that is a standardized work that you don't need any special skill to perform you or or, that, or the much. skills that you, mm. you, you'll be trained in a day and you could just perform the job. I, I think that's the idea. I don't know if they, I've not mm. seen an official definition, but that's how I understand it, which in his case, I know is not even exactly true because he was working as an orderly in a hospital for many years, mm. which true, it's not, it's not a highly skilled job, but there's training involved and there's minutia because he was, he was working in the neurosurgical department. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's also part of him saying, you know, um, downplaying what he was doing, even though it was not, you know. When I had surgery. He was not a nurse or, and he was not a nurse. He was not a doctor, but. The orderlies, as in the people who take care of people everywhere, right? I think that's what it is. I'm not sure. He was, no, that's probably not the right word. He was some kind of assistant. Of, okay. Um, it's well, if, also, that would be a. Assistant. If it wasn't orderly. Like when I had surgery last year, I'm telling you, they are skilled <laughs> to get around a hospital and to move things. I mean, I'm like, I think that's it. what I think that's the right equivalent word for in English, uh, an orderly. Oh, of course. Yeah. You're, I forgot you're translating from French. Yeah. yeah I'm translating from French. So anyway, job. it's a person working in a hospital, but doesn't have the training to be a nurse. Mm hmm. Uh, but they're doing stuff around the hospital. <laughs> they're, they're helping. So and I he, think an he, is the right word. he considered that to be a muck job. He considered his jobs to be a muck job. So he considered his career to be that way. He's considered oh, like his a career to be of... a strings of jobs. Okay. Because I first heard muck <clears throat> job when but I, I read think it was a little bit of the opposite of, well, that's my interpretation again, of course, of um, a, a bit of a. Um, uh, going against the grain on purpose of saying like i don't need ah. to have a career which is the same as being worried about one it's the opposite yeah because you're, you're worried still defining about the negative yeah something. so you're worried about the negative like i'm not somebody driven by my career like you are yeah which is another way that you that's something else that he was kind of saying ah okay a bit sort like of, the, a the bit. i am thing i if i say i'm a teacher no i work as a teacher but who i am is like separating those two no, that, that what I mean by that is is uh, you could say that you're not something, but that defines it as much as if you are. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. I so, I don't have a career, or uh, I have yeah, a like, of so jobs. as a teenager and well, still today, I tend to be or to identify myself as being pretty cool, which means that nothing I'm above most. Like uh, I'm not excited like these <laughs> other people. I don't get excited yeah, about you. You're, you're not going like to watch Squid Game because everybody's watching it. Exactly. <laughs> everybody's watching Squid Game, so that's done. I'm not watching this for a while. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm exactly the same. Yeah, so that's <laughs> one way of saying it. So, like, so yeah. I'm not like all these others. I'm not like the sheep following the hype. But then you defined yourself by the hype, and regardless, because you're going with or without. <laughs> I'm not sure that I think that makes sense. It, it well, it's a very subtle idea it's because subtle, yeah. yeah, because it's really easy to say, oh, I don't buy into that. But of course, the very act of saying you don't buy into it actually is defining more of what it is. It's defining something for sure, yeah. Yeah. So the what I was going to say and, about and just on Squid Game, I just also when it came out a few weeks ago, and immediately Netflix recommended it to me because it was just like it started spiking. Was it only a few weeks? It feels yeah. like it's been ages. No. Uh, and I just, I, I saw the thing and I read an article about it and I didn't. So one, I've watched several death game type because it's become a genre of its own. And of yes. course, we knew Battle Royale back then, yes. a while back. Yes. So we had that. And a few months ago, I watched Alice in Wonderland, uh, Alice in Borderland, sorry, uh, which is a Japanese okay. adapted from a manga, also death game style thing. Different, obviously different scenarios. 
And a few weeks ago when it came out, I really did not feel like watching an extremely gruesome and bloody death game style thing. And I was like, I just, I'm not in the mood for that. I need, I want something a little bit more lighthearted or not desperate people fighting for their lives. It really, it's not, I didn't want to watch that. And then it kept blowing up. And then I was like, okay, now it's still too popular. I'm not watching it for now. I'll watch it later once the whole thing's died down, if, yeah. if at all. Hopefully it will. But um, this idea of a muck job is also interesting because I first heard it when I read Generation X. And Generation X... That. Who wrote that? Who wrote that? Douglas Coupland wrote it. You haven't read okay. it? No. There's a lot of things I haven't read. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm surprised because I think Douglas Coupland manages to I, write... No, I don't know in what a, that book is. He ma- if you heard Douglas Coupland, right? He wrote Microsurfs, he wrote J-Pod, he wrote... Really? Wow. Okay, it doesn't surprised. really. He wrote what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, he wrote. A, he wrote a, a. He wrote some really good books. But the yes. way he writes is that you're you're reading and you've read fifty pages and you're like, what have I just been reading? How? Like, what? What's happened? He captures the book Generation X, kind of is generation defining, but it is it captures that feeling of I've worked really hard. I've got a degree and now there are no jobs so i'm like overqualified for this job but i'm just going to do it just to get money and he he captured that that shift into everything becoming about marketing everything becoming a target market everything becoming i'm being sold to the idea of becoming including a bit naming more generations, media savvy including naming generations when the, In, yes, the following generations the had to thing. deal with the same experience you just described yeah but up until that, up until Generation X, I don't think but... it was as, I don't think it was, because it, it, we both grew up at a time when there was no internet. It was books, it was riding my bike, it was going outside, and then it wasn't tech. It wasn't driven by mobile phones and, like, whatever. I remember a time, you know, when I was 18, I didn't, how do we organize to meet up? We never had mobile phones. It was a phone. Like, it was, that, that was my world when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. So that I, I feel good or no, I feel glad that I grew up trying to figure stuff out on an 8-bit 64K computer and not like it's all like Apple just presented it for me so I know exactly how it's supposed to work. And I, I think I straddle both those worlds. I can read a book and I can use the internet. So Generation X is a book, I think, captures that atmosphere of pre technology explaining everything and now technology is part of everyone's life and that's where I first heard this idea of a MOOC job maybe that was the first time I, I realized oh I could just get a series of jobs and have enough to pay my way and then I wouldn't have to have this career that my parents expect me to have and I think but that I goes think that, but isn't that the, perhaps the first time that you start also seeing it but of course it's pejorative yeah it the term is. is massively pejorative. Anybody yeah, before is. that who were just doing jobs to provide for their family was not, and most of the people working, uh, by the way, which reminds me of the episode when I mentioned the story about the essential workers from last year. Yeah. And this person working at McDonald's that actually enjoyed their job. Yeah. So there's also just some, by the way, I mean, to mention something extremely pretentious and arrogant and uh, pejorative to use that word. Because before that, and I'm not sure why you're talking about the digital age as, as a reference as well, but, um, but before that, most people might, some people might have aspired to have a career, but the vast majority of people just did their thing, went to find a job locally, and, you know, that's what got them the money to live. And yeah. I, I don't think everybody thought of themselves or thought of careers. This is a much more widespread idea today. Yeah. At least in our in our rich um, and you know middle class, upper middle class, Western industrialized civilization. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. otherwise, you just you know if you're in, if you're in a rural village in India or wherever, you just you know, and while well, you just tend to the fields and just do the same thing your parents were doing or maybe you have a little bit of extension and you're like oh your uncle or extended family does something different then I can learn to do that thing whatever it is that they their trade and I think the the link with tech is 
and what you said goes back to our friend Ivano Harari who talks about the that generation of you just do what your parents did Mm -hmm. there was no and you would generations on you would expect that you would do whatever your parents did that isn't happening anymore because and I and I don't know if he specifically says it but the certainly I feel like technology has driven that pace of change of like oh I have to adapt oh I have to reinvent oh what am I going to do well, there's also, I'm thinking of, because I was just mentioning a fictional rural India, but I was also wondering about China, where you mm-hmm. have a lot of people coming from rural areas that go to the big city mm-hmm. with the expectation of finding a job and end up in a, you know, factory may, may, making Industrial components for the iPhone or whatever. I don't know, not necessarily a sweatshop. Well, I mean, we would consider that to be perhaps, but this is, a, you know, working in an iPhone related components or whatever something similar is just a job you're living in probably relatively cramped quarters and then you go mm. to work and that's your life which uh, but then so what I, my, my point there is okay so that's person let's say imagining they came from a rural area they went to near Guangzhou or Dongguan uh, where there's a lot of electronics and big factories between Hong Kong and uh, Shenzhen uh, or no sorry between Shenzhen and uh, Guangzhou um, and they have the job that they wanted, mm-hmm. earning however much money. Do they consider that to be their career, or they have other aspirations? I don't know. I'm I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm completely. Mm-hmm. But um, whether they'll have a series of jobs, whether that's going to be their main job for a very long time, send family, send money back to their family home, and be and hope for getting out at some point and going back to where they came from or having a better job. But I don't know how much there's a hope for being able to go through the rungs of a hypothetic, uh, hypothetic ladder. Cause for a long time, which we don't really have as much anymore, but there's still yeah. around this hope of mm. being able to, you get a job at a big corporation and go through the rungs of the ladder. And that's your evolution in mm. the career. Mm-hmm. Uh, assuming you stay in one job or if you, even if you, if you uh, Back to the question, if you go through one job to the other, the other notion that we covered in the introduction episode, but that is part of the dictionary definition, is what strings it to be, together to make it a career is that there's an evolution and there's some kind of progress that you can look back on. Uh, one main marker is how much money you're making. So you're, if you're making more money than before in a series of jobs that are related, that you're performing the same kind of job, then you can consider that a career. A career, okay. Okay. If you're earning it, the same thing, doing the same thing in different places, I would say that's more to the area of the string of jobs. But then again, I, that's why I said it's in the eye of the beholder. Whether you think that you're, you're having a career, you're developing a good career, so it's only once you look back. But it's also based on your intention when you're doing it. So when you were just, we were talking about the, one of the episodes about um, uh, Steve Jobs' uh, commencement talk at Stanford. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of joining the dots forward but another way just a simpler saying that is just to have an intention there's something that you want that you want to learn that you want to progress that you want to do that you want to perform that you to, that intention objective uh is the beginning of the of a path to a career that's exactly what you did yeah and that's what we talked about in the previous couple of episodes <clears throat> i mean we'll talk about that in every episode probably about career but there's a I think that there's an intention to be able to have that. You need to, you need to think about it. I think uh, you need to be able to carve some time and -hmm. think about what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And for that, it's sometimes it's really difficult or seemingly impossible for some people and carving some time. I mean, that would mean that instead of watching tv chilling out or even taking care of your kids which sometimes is impossible or your wife or whatever or husband Mm -hmm. over the weekend or at in the evening when you're tired and you're tired on the weekend too from your job uh to think about wait a minute what am i doing where do i want to go is this job the right job is there a way for this to get better and improvement certainly the main marker in our society is considered to be salary but it could be other things Mm. Now, what else it could be? It could just be, well, I'm doing this. I'd like to learn. I'm doing Y and I'd like to learn X. Mm. Um, or You're reminding me of the wait, but why post. 
as another one of our references. <laughs> the Wiper Wipers, because the Wiper Wipers has a series of exercises that are really just overall total personal development on looking at what is it that drives you. And I still haven't finished to do the exercises. I only did. You were going to do that. some, weren't you? I did. I did a bunch, but I didn't I do know, the whole but thing. Last episode, you said you were going to do some. Yeah, and I, I didn't do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I didn't. Do I that. thought you, I thought you might have. No, I haven't done I, any of it yet. No, I'm late on everything. I had a lot of work this week. This is exactly what we're talking about. I started getting busy. Uh, so, this uh, reminds so, me of busy at manifesto as well. But they, I had a lot of work, and I have a bunch of work next week. And I, the rest of today, I'm I'm late on a few other things that I that I owe, uh, and I need to prepare for some other work for next week. So, so this idea that you're doing a job, but also carving out the time to reflect on what it might be, or what it could be, having allows you to create some kind of intention that creates a career. Yeah, I think that's what you're saying. Because life flies by. And you only Ferris realize Bueller. the time that you exactly you only realize the time that you have when you're young. Mm. Uh, even and this and Ferris Bueller's Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a fantastic movie. I highly recommend it. it. He's totally right. You should take a yeah. holiday sometimes. But this is not really what I'm talking about. It's exactly the opposite, actually. It's to we don't realize when we're young, and given there's a bunch of our students and your pupils that listen to this. Uh, or and or it's intended for young people that you do have a lot of time to think about this stuff when you're younger not everybody does of, of course but there's a bunch of people that do have the privilege you don't realize mm -hmm. because time flies by and it does fly by already when you're really young mm -hmm. and you have homework to do and friends mm -hmm. to hang out with mm -hmm. and stuff like that which as an adult going only gets worse mm -hmm. time flies extremely fast and yes if you don't stop by uh, what does he say again if you don't life stop moves pretty time, fast you might miss it yeah life moves life pretty, pretty fast. fast and if you don't stop from time to time to have a look at it or to have or to enjoy it or something you'll miss the, the it. full quote then you yeah. might just miss it which i completely agree with you should but similarly if you don't stop from time to time and like make an effort to stop and think about what it is that you want where you're at and what is it going to take now it's it can be um daunting absolutely because it's forcing you to, which is why the weight, but why exercises are good, but they're difficult. Uh, and they're very complete. What's interesting is when you're thinking about a career that is right for you, all the exercises from weight, but why encourage you and ask you to look at all the different areas of life that are driving you mm. and to examine where they come from, which ultimately is extremely difficult to do by yourself, but it's a good mm. effort to try to do it in the exercises. And the overall article, even if you don't read it, if you, if you don't do the exercises are really good. But uh, the uh, so he, he introduces to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, if you haven't read it, the uh, Tim Urban of Wait But Why and the How to Pick a Career That You Enjoy and That Is Right For You uh, has a bunch of different, as he does, introduces concepts. And I love Tim Urban for that. And in this concept, and his the yearning octopus and his yeah. illustrations. Yeah. The yearning octopus is a representation of all the different aspects of drives that you have in your life for yourself. Uh, and each tentacle is an area that might be and probably is competing with another area at the same time. So you want to be admired or you want to be recognized, but you also want to do good by other people, but you also want to earn a lot of money, but you also want to save the planet, but you also want to a lot of other things. So whatever that might be for you. And so, to, so there's a series of exercises to examine what are the things that are driving you Mm -hmm. And where do you want to spend your time? And ultimately to help you figure out, well, what is it that you want? Um, and so assuming that you're in a, a job at the moment, what's difficult is, and one way or another, then we talked about this in previous episodes, one way or another to jump from having a string of jobs to a career takes some kind of the effort that we're describing, I think. Yeah. And yeah. probably will take a certain amount of risk <laughs> Because you realize that mm -hmm. maybe you might realize that you want to change jobs to be mm -hmm. more in line with what you want or to progress mm -hmm. in the area that you want. Or maybe not change jobs, but have a risky or, or difficult conversation with your boss or your manager to say, well, actually, I want to change what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps. But, you know, say that boss says no, then what do you do? Do you keep doing that same job? Uh, but, but from the moment you started doing the looking, 
then you're also probably present to mm -hmm. whatever is not satisfying about what you're doing and you mm -hmm. know a little bit more what you want to do next. So all of this is daunting because it's difficult to look at or yeah. can be, it can be difficult to look at, let alone the fact that it's challenging to find time to be able to do it and it's tiring. And, uh, you know, and it takes, that takes a lot of effort. It's much easier to keep doing the, what you're doing but when you keep doing what you're doing, and this is back to what you were mentioning about the Harari video, is uh, if you're in a job that that could be performed by, well, uh, an artificial intelligence, a robot, or somebody else yeah. in another yeah. country paid less than you, <clears throat> then it unfortunately behooves you to, uh, I think at some point, to look at, okay, well, how can I improve what I'm doing? And this actually is maybe a little, almost more in the area of, the, of deep work. Um, well, that's what that's the thing I was going to get into, which is a was, book which we talked about. And there's actually, if we did almost a full episode about deep work, which we can, link yeah, to. yeah, I, I think that the doing a series to, the, to go back to the question again, when does mm -hmm. a series of jobs become a career? Mm -hmm. That another aspect to this, or another way of looking at this, is the craft over time doing a lot of different things can actually. When you see the theme you've developed as something yeah. that you are have got into something that you're you've maybe done some deep work on that you've crafted that you've yeah. become really good at but, but overall i also think that regardless is still in the eye of the beholder you could say that I, this is my career from the first job you have in this thing yeah or maybe at the second if it's similar of a uh, same job title or that you're you know honing your organizational skills for project management, even though, mm -hmm. even if you're not called a project manager mm -hmm. or typing, I don't know, making this up. But um, so nobody says that it's not a career when you started. Yeah. There's yeah. no, there's no authority yeah. to stop you from saying this is my career before even you, before you start it. The only authority is yourself or anybody else that might think you're silly or stupid for saying that. But just like when I, in the two episodes ago, when I talked about my career and I decided to want to be, I wanted mm -hmm. to be a strategist, I said, I'm a strategist. I didn't have a job and I had no authority whatsoever. But, you know. But, that, but that's an interesting bit in today's question is that I could, when, I, I could have said, no, when does it become? become well, a career it did, so you, you you what you're it sounds like what you're it saying became a, what i'm saying in some cases like you me, said it, it became a career when i said it yeah yeah now i didn't have it it wasn't true at the time uh just like you know you when does your career uh, so let's say okay, so there's no even though it's a difficult job to get into, there's no specific type of, well, there are training for this, for, for what I do, but you don't, you know, you don't need a certification from the government, like mm -hmm. a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a little bit more tricky, but when does your career as a doctor start? You could, so you could say your career really starts when you're being paid for what you're doing. Yes, true. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. But then it's your first job as a doctor that starts, but then you're also being trained. You could say you're, you're a doctor while you're training. The moment you get accepted on, into medical school. Yeah, you could say. Because that's when your career really starts. You're being trained for that. That's interesting because when I changed... You could say. I think you could say that. It's not yeah. wrong. But, when, you, think... when, when I changed careers to become a teacher, yeah. would I say that my career as a teacher started doing teach training? I don't know. The, would you? I'm thinking. I'm thinking out loud. I... Yeah. No. Ha, maybe because it's the nature of teaching. I would say it was when I qualified as a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fair. <clears throat> but then you wouldn't have qualified if you hadn't started. And then I had, I did come up with the idea of, I am going to be a teacher. I had that intention. Yes. So yeah. that was when everything changed. Yeah. Because if I hadn't done that, then I wouldn't. Have, I, I don't know. I might be doing what you do. Yeah. So, you know, there's one way to look at it that the career is what we said at the beginning. You look back and you go, you look at, you look back at your string of jobs and you go, okay, there's some similarity and that's, this is my career because that's the prime definition of it. It's just a series of jobs that you did. Mm. So one way or another, it is one, unless you don't want to see it as such. 
And then the other Sorry. way around to build one is you have to have the path forward so to to make it as in that's the whole intention and project that we were just talking about now and then the idea of deep work is learning difficult stuff quickly or effectively or both yeah the, so the whole intro can... i was referring to the whole beginning of the book where he talks about uh and so this is cal newport uh deep work and it's a good book and he talks about how, particularly for what he do, so he defines this area of knowledge workers. Yeah. Uh, anybody who gets paid, so anybody who's getting paid to, um, to provide brain function essentially, to a book corporation. Uh, there's also arguably the whole other area of bullshit jobs, but I've read an article, but I haven't read that book. Um, but anyway, he he talks of the fact that if you're not providing the best you can be these jobs will be automated. Uh, mm. They're gonna be robots and artificial mm. intelligence to do it mm -hmm. better than humans, mm -hmm. unless you're really good at what you do and you're providing something different from the rest. Yeah. He, if he, all he, you're doing is actually doing meetings, scheduling meetings, writing PowerPoints, and you're not providing original thinking, then those functions can be performed by somebody else, somewhere else, and probably by a robot. And so, he, he talks about it as an opportunity. There's an opportunity yeah for people to learn difficult stuff and as a way of providing value because if you're not providing value then teachers are going to get replaced by yeah robots. and I, sh I should get back into doing a little bit of deep work stuff it's not easy and, and the other premise of the book is we're, we're in an age of distraction where everybody everything in the internet and our phones and social media are extremely distracting Mm. and uh and don't let us go deeper into topics so to be able to really think and and give uh, original thinking on on whatever you're working on or we'll um, give time to original thinking because i mean yeah do you think and similarly every... you were talking about the, the craft the craft is this yeah. is the idea yeah, yeah. of craft yeah is to do any kind of craft well you need to spend time and focus yep. on it um and and be willing to be terrible at it for a while be willing to be terrible, put in the hours. Mm. And I, I'm bad. I'm, I, well, I'm bad. I think I'm bad at this. I'm not bad everywhere and I'm good at what I do. Mm. But I, I get distracted, but like most people do these days. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm a, a bit of a jack of all trades. So I've moved around and I've done a bunch of stuff. Though, though my main work is what I do focus. But I probably, I mean, I, I know that I didn't put as many hours as somebody else in the same amount of time. Mm. Uh, I could have honed and put more hours purely into brand strategy to be masterful at it, but I also mm -hmm. wanted to spend more time traveling and going, doing places and visiting people and having other kinds of leisure experiences, I suppose. But um, I do, I think you, yeah, I, like I think you think that, add, that it does add to my whole, um, yeah. to my Your ability to work. But it, no, but if you, if you're really purely looking at the craft, like the number of, concentrated focused hours that you're spending on your work uh then i didn't do it as much as somebody else who was probably in, employed full-time and um for the length of the 15 years i but didn't go I as deep the i don't i don't mean this as a criticism as a self-criticism you know when no, i when i went a six, fact I, I had huh? and choice yeah when I went traveling and I, and I went skiing for six weeks, I was skiing. I was not, and I did a little bit of work and keeping up and I wrote a newsletter for, uh, for a bunch of strategists and I read some articles, but it was not during that time, somebody who was employed full time, it was doing a lot more of the focus work that I tend to do and that, that I wasn't. Now, uh, I was going to ask you, cause I don't remember in, I know that play is one of, is, is a concept that you're very interested in play is something I'm interested in, the state of play. Does he talk about play in deep work? I'm pretty sure that he does. I can't remember. I and so. the, I mean, and not, I, not, maybe a bit, but Maybe not I'm really. just joining ideas from I think you might places. be, but I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, but the, this idea of craft and really getting into something and over a series of jobs and what you said about looking for the connecting theme, like you, you know, you can do it with hindsight, but I think it's worth mentioning this idea of play and the state of play when we're into something 
and I might be tired, I might have had a full day at work, I might be whatever, but here I am having this conversation with you, putting together a podcast. That's not what I know other teachers or other, yeah, it's not what I think other, I know other teachers, my colleagues don't do this. But it's, it's kind of bonkers, uh, the, or it can be seen as such. So I was yeah. just telling you before we started recording that somebody just asked me, uh, I told them I was recording for a podcast, and they asked me why I had a podcast, which is a question people <laughs> rarely ask. Usually they ask what the podcast is about, uh, which it seems like a fair question, really. And they're, it's, why do you have a... Uh, so the frowning is just me. I i don't know if they were frowning or not, because it was a text message. But um, the... Uh, so the why, why is interesting. Why do you have a podcast? Just, yeah. So, and you're just talking about it. So other teachers don't do this. We don't even have that many people watching or listening. I'd like to have more people watch or listen. But what I do like, so I like podcasting. Clearly, I like thinking and talking. Mm -hmm. And I do like doing that with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and having this is a regular opportunity to do that together. To talk about something interesting and to have a conversation and to um, hopefully be useful to the people that are watching. Mm. To share my experience and and i like this the theme of this podcast which is tackling questions that are not being tackled by school mm. uh, and there's also another because i had a conversation with a coach about that which is an interesting one is that technically you'd think that i should put more efforts towards having something of a podcast that is more dedicated to my work to your craft to my craft well i i would argue this does hone my craft overall but it's it's pointed in a yeah. direction that doesn't really uh well that is not catering to my field of work what i mean by that is as a brand strategist i should probably have a podcast about brand strategy that talks about how to do it or that talks about that talks to or about marketing stuff or what's going on in media or like how to get more customers mm -hmm. or people mm -hmm. to follow your facebook mm -hmm. page for but those, but anyway for so to think about doing something for a marketing manager audience or, uh, or, or um, something that would be uh, more directly linked to me finding clients as a brand strategist. Right. And or learning more about brand building, uh, marketing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But so funny enough, just like Squid Game, there are a few people doing that. So either doing the finding out more about strategy and publishing at a ridiculously prolific rate that I'm never going to follow. And I haven't, I haven't tried. Uh, and I listened to a few of those conversations. And I'm like, this is great that he's doing this. This person is doing that. And I don't want to do the same thing. Mm. And I also really enjoy the conversations with you. Mm. So there's still where Me I too. find that there's something that joins back uh, and we're going on a tangent. I mean, I'm, I'm in the middle of a big tangent, obviously that it joins back my craft in brand strategy is that it's questioning things and it's going deep into a topic. Mm. Uh, and something else that is not necessarily immediately linked to my work, but that I do enjoy is, is sharing knowledge. Mm. Uh, well, and, I, and I would also the idea say of giving back of as well, that yes. other people spend time with me and that I share my knowledge with others. Yeah. Uh, and that difference. I have fun exploring and questioning and it keeps me on the, uh, keeps me looped in with reading stuff uh even though the topics are vast uh but i also like that our new season we're a little bit more focused on one topic and that we'll have mm. future other topics that are this one and we we thought this was i think we said it in the career episode but um it's it's a good segue because career definitely it's a topic that's definitely interesting for the young people in our our, our well our pupils and students Mm. Uh, so to start there, I think is a good, uh, good, and then we'll go elsewhere for other ones that m some of which might be more related to my immediate, you know, sharing brand building knowledge, I guess. But but it, the this theme of career and the the sources we've chosen for this season have got me thinking about my career mm. and the. And, and reflecting on the series of jobs that I've had. And in contrast to you, I've been in the same school doing the same, well, doing, doing teaching for, I'm now in my 18th year. I've had a series of roles within that, but the, I, I can and would say I have had a 
successful career as a teacher. Yeah. And I feel a bit weird saying that, but I think the reason I feel a bit weird is because I'm, I have that attitude of wanting to learn and wanting to explore and wanting to keep moving forward and maybe have other things that I do. But the, do we, here's a question. Yeah. Given that we've like done, we've exhausted the questions. We haven't really. No, no. Yeah, his, his, maybe, maybe we have. But would you say that we've done nearly fifty episodes now of teaching yeah. tangents? Do we have careers as podcasters? Well, interesting. Um, would you? I, I would feel weird saying my career as a podcaster. I, I mean, as, sort of. I guess, but we don't, I mean, if you take career as the, the, the main definition of its uh, way to earn money, then no. Uh, I, I feel maybe I could say that or, or that I have a, a career as a podcaster because I started podcasting in 2015. Yeah. Yeah. And my main podcast is, is funny enough, although I've completely not taken care of it at all these days, but for a while, and I think maybe even still now, even though I'm barely publishing, uh, which is wrong i shouldn't be but oh, well it's not wrong it's just what i'm doing at the moment i'm not really taking care of it i'm taking care of this one um but i think it's in the top so of course there are hundreds of thousands if not millions of podcasts out there mm. and they're all free there's tons 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 mm. tons plus plus there's now an industry that are really investing a lot of money into it for the past while well, still while well, still since 2014 15 ish um and uh, so Spotify has been buying studios and, you know, they're investing in original content and there's walled gardens now that there didn't used to be. Everything used to be free and, and uh, available to everybody. So there's a second game. Anyway, that's a whole different conversation. Wait, wait. Do, you, do you use the phrase walled gardens to mean yeah. like premium content? Is that what you mean? Yeah. So Spotify. You pay is, for it. Spotify has invested in a bunch of different podcasts. Okay. Podcast studios. Right. Ah. So now Gimlet Media is their main content producer that they built as a, so that was now, that now belongs to Spotify. I didn't know that. Okay. For, oh, it's been two years. Uh, for, and it's, it's a really, really good co studio. Um, Gimlet is a really good uh, podcast producer. At the beginning and still for now, uh, most of their shows are free, are available on Spotify and on podcast apps still freely and, and um, ad there's advertising on them. Right. But they just announced the second most popular show that now it's only available on Spotify and you need a Spotify account to listen to it. So no longer available on the open podcasting structure. Uh, uh, okay. The second, their second most popular show. No, it's the second the. show. It's the second popular show they do that with. Sorry. Oh, uh, uh, okay. All right. Because the first was, what's his face? I can't remember. The, huh? Joe Rogan. That was the first one. Joe Rogan, then, but Joe Rogan got in. There's a whole other story. He got an exclusive deal to get out of it, but it's one of them. It's one of the people that, uh, they, okay. that they spent an enormous amount of money on, and that so that his show is. But I, so yeah, his show I think is no longer available on on a podcasting app. It's only available on Spotify. Who's the second then? Who's what second? So I meant Gimlet. I was talking about Gimlet. Oh, oh okay. I I did right because I've heard of Gimlet. I didn't know that Spotify bought. Okay, right, cool. I get. I'm with you now. I don't know Spotify. Sorry, maybe it wasn't clear, but Gimlet. So Gimlet is a podcast producer. Studio. Yeah, I okay, guess. So now. they had one show put on, and I just recently heard yep. there's another show that. Okay, so that now I goes to be completely exclusively on Spotify and not uh, openly available. And that's that's purely as the, so the I, growth. It might seem to you that Spotify is openly available, but it isn't. It's Spotify. The growth of podcasting development as an industry, and they're beginning. To, they want to monetize it. That's yeah, what they're doing, right? Yeah, yeah, that is what they're doing. So anyway, all that all that said, that's not my point. Was to say that my podcast is in the five or ten percent top podcast in terms of listeners, only because I have a, at least a hundred people listening per episode. It's not much, but it's enough to be in the top ten percent <laughs> or five percent. I can't remember. And I, yeah. Well, that's which I, I tend to be at 500 listens per episode, but not at, not as soon as I publish them. Wow. A few are certainly a few hundred, but not anymore. I'm not because you need to take care of your audience and I'm not publishing regular. I haven't published since like May. That's a long time. 
So I'm going to bring I'm not it back. Taking to, care, I'm taking care of this podcast with you. Yeah. But anyway, let's. Just, I'm, I'm going to bring bring you back to two things, both yeah. the theme and the question. Mm-hmm. And it might be time to wrap it up because I think we maybe we have all yeah. the evidence. I think it is. Question. So the what we, we, I asked that question facetiously about career as a podcaster, and you mentioned this definition of career, and we have talked about this in the season three introductory episode. That and I've just looked it up. Uh, the, definition of career according to the Cambridge Dictionary the job or series of jobs that you do during your working life especially if you continue to get better jobs and earn more money yeah that's I remembered that part that's what I was referring to at the beginning so the going back to I we wouldn't have a career as a podcaster no we're doing this for leisure yeah and we're doing it for fun so that's which that's was one thing, thing that's uh, that's the one thing I realized and discussed with my coach about my other podcast. Even though it's, he was like, "All right, great. How many leads do you get from your podcast?" I'm like, uh, "Ah, yeah, okay." And it's that's useful for my work because I learned a lot. It does add to my professional image to say that I've interviewed other strategists and etc. It contributed to me finding work, and it contributed to as a persuasion argument to say that I know what I'm talking about. But did I ever have anybody contact me and say, oh, I've heard you through your podcast. I'd like to work with you. No. Yeah. And ultimately, that's going to be a measure of of something. It's really easy to get into content creation. It's really easy for my pupils to say, I want to get TikTok famous. But what does it actually produce in revenue or what value are you adding? And it's increasingly the more people want to do it, the more difficult it is. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that do it a lot that publish yeah. stuff stream tiktok twitch etc so the that's our theme in this season season three that idea of career and today's question has been when does a series of jobs become a career so i think that's don't forget a good place to like to and together. subscribe and send us new questions yeah send us new Sorry, questions I, to, I or send me you. new questions yes. to hello, hello at james and Thank you for listening, watching, and engaging. Thank you.